Thus saith the Lord, In their affliction they shall seek me early. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we fall on to know, Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as, as a morning cloud, and as the early do, do it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I have desired mercy, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. I have considered thy works and was confounded. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In the time of confusion of my soul, in wrath, remember mercy. God came from Tima and his Holy One from the thick woods of the mountains. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. O oh. oh God, from whom Judas received the punishment of his guilt, and the thief the reward of his confession, Grant unto us the effects of thy propitiation, that is, in his passion, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give unto both the diverse rewards of their merits, so he may take away the transgressions of our old nature, and bestow upon us the grace of his resurrection, who with the Father and the Holy Ghost lives and reigns ever one God, a world without end. Amen. spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. The 
deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, and preserve me from the wicked man, who imagine mischief in their hearts, and stir up strife all the day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent, and their poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the ungodly, and preserve me from the wicked man, who are proposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have laid a snare for me, and spread a net abroad with cords, yea, and set traps in my way. I said to the Lord, Thou art my God, hear the voice of my prayers, O Lord. O Lord God, Thou strength of my health, Thou hast covered my head in the day of the battle. Let not the ungodly have his desire, O Lord. Let not his mischievous imagination prosper, lest they be too proud. Let the mischief of their own lips fall upon the head of them that compass me round about. The righteous all shall show give thanks unto thy name, and the just shall continue in thy sight. At that time, Jesus went forth with his disciples over the brook of Kedron, where there was a garden, into the which he entered in his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then having received the band of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as then, as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way, that the saying might be fulfilled, of which he spake, of them which thou givest me, I have lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword in the sheath. The cup which it, my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first. For he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that year. Now Caiaphas was he, which gave counsel to the Jews, that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter, following Jesus, and did, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter. Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He said, I am not. And the, 
the servants and the officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was coal, and then warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warned himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world, and I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had spoken thus, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warned himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being the kinsman whose, of him whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Did I not see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas under the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, what accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered in into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Thou sayest this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth Heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had heard this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find no fault in him at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas 
was a robber. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited the crown of thorns and put it upon his head. And they that put him, and they put on him a purple robe, and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again, and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to ye, that I that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came forth Jesus, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto him, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and the officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went in again into the judgment hall, and said unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power against me at all, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou lettest this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down on the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him. Crucify him. Jesus a Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then, then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into the place the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the middle. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This title then bred many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh unto the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garment and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. 
They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled which said, They parted my ring among them, and for my vesture did they cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by at the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was a set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews, therefore, because it was their preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. And he that saw it bear white record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe, for these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken, and again another scripture said, then shall they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus, and there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wound it in linen clothes with spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, 
and in the garden was a new sepulchre, wherein was never a man yet lain. There lay they, Jesus, therefore, because the Jews' preparation day for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the holy church of God, that our God and Lord, by the fact's sake, to keep her in peace and beauty, and preserve her throughout all the world, making subject unto her principalities and powers, and grant that, leading a quiet and peaceful life, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. Almighty and everlasting God, who in Christ has revealed thy glory to all the nations, preserve the works of thy mercy, and that thy church spread abroad over the whole world may with steadfast faith persevere in the confession of thy name through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost ever one God world without end Amen Let us pray also for our most blessed Father our Metropolitan Joseph our God and Lord who hath chosen him unto the order of bishops, may preserve him in health and safety to his holy church, for a governance of thy holy people of God. Let us pray. Let us bow to thee. whose judgment all things are established. Mercifully for our, our prayers, and in thy goodness preserve him whom thou hast chosen to be our bishop, that the Christian people who are governed by thine authority may under so great a pontiff increase the, in the merits of their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived and reigned with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us also pray for all bishops, priests and deacons, subdeacons, acolytes, exorcists, readers, doorkeepers, confessors, virgins, and widows, and for all the holy people of God. Let us pray. Let us bow the Arise. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications, which were offered before thee for all orders of the same, that by the bounty of thy grace they may faithfully serve thee in their several estates. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let's pray also for our go all governors of countries, and for all those who bear rule and authority unto them that our God and Lord may guide their hearts and minds according to his will for our perpetual peace. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. Almighty and everlasting God, in whose hands are the dominion and government of all the peoples, look graciously on those who bear rule and authority over us, 
that all nations, by the protection of thy right hand, may continue in true religion and abide in continual safety. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us also pray for our catechumen, that our Lord, our God and Lord, would open the ears of their hearts and the gate of mercy, that receiving in the waters of regeneration the remission of all their sins, that they may be found in Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Let us bow the Jesus. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost enrich thy church with this new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumen, that they, being born again in the water of baptism, may be numbered among the sons of thine adoption. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lived and reigned with the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray dearly, beloved, unto God, the Father Almighty, that He would that He would purge the world from all errors, would take away diseases, drive away famine, open the prisons, loosen the chains, grant unto the pilgrims a safe return. To heal, to heal the sick, and to them that travel by sea, a haven of safety. Let us pray. Let us bow. Arise. Almighty and everlasting God, the comfort of them that mourn, the strength of them that fail. Let the prayers of them that cry out of any tribulation ascend unto thee, that in their necessities all may rejoice in the succor of thy loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for heretics and schismatics, that our Lord God would deliver them from all their errors, and vouchsafe to call them back to their Holy Mother, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Who saves all men, and what's not that any should perish? Look upon the souls that are deceived by the craft of the devil, that the hearts of them that are gone astray, being delivered from all perversity of heresy, may turn to wisdom and come again to the unity of thy truth. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. <laughs> Let us also pray for the faithless Jews, that our God and Lord would take away the veil from their hearts, that they may also acknowledge Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Let us bow to Arise. Almighty and everlasting God, who denies not thy mercy even unto the faithful Jews, 
graciously hear our prayers, which were for the blindness of this people, that they, acknowledging the light of thy truth, which is Christ, may be delivered from their own darkness. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us also pray for the heathen, that God Almighty would take away the iniquity from their hearts, that forsaking their idols, they may be turned unto the living and true God, and to his own, only Son, Jesus Christ, our God and Lord. Let us pray. Let us bow the knee. Arise. Almighty and everlasting God, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they should live, mercifully receive our prayers and deliver them from the worship of idols, and gather them unto thy holy church, the glory, praise and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross, whereon was hung the world's salvation. Come, let us worship. Behold the wood of the cross, whereon was hung the world's salvation. Oh, come, let us worship.
under the or women in the library answer me. Because I brought thee forth from the land of Egypt that I has prepared a cross for thy salvation. O Agios Opheos, Sanctus Deus, Agios Ikiros, Sanctus Fortis, Agios Athanasos, Eleazon Imas, Sanctus Immortalis Miserere Nobis. Because I led thee through the desert for years and fed thee with manna, brought thee into a land exceedingly good. Thou hast prepared a cross for thy Savior. Agios, O Deus. Sanctus Deus. Agios, Ikiros. Sanctus Fortis. Agios, Athanasios, Eleazon, Imas. Sanctus Immortalis, Miserere Nobis. What more could I have done for thee that I have not done? I indeed did plant thee in my vineyard, exceeding fair, and thou art become very bitter unto me, for vinegar thou gavest to quench my thirst, and hast pierced with a spear the side of thy Savior. I heals, O Deus, Sanctus Deus, Agios Iskiros, Sanctus Fortis, Agios Athanas, Mos Eleazon Imas, Sanctus Immortalis Miserere Nobis. I did scourge Egypt with her firstborn for thy sake, and thou hast scourged me and delivered me up. O my people, what have I done unto thee? Or wherein have I wearied thee? Answer me. I led thee out of Egypt, drowning Pharaoh in the Red Sea. Thou hast delivered me unto the chief priests. O my people, what have I done unto thee? Or wherein have I wearied thee? Answer me. I opened the sea before thee, and thou hast opened my side with spirit. O my people, what have I done unto thee? Or wherein have I wearied thee? Answer me.
pray for us and that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive this sacrifice at thy hands to the praise and glory of his name, both to our benefit and that of all his holy church. Let us pray. Instructed by saving precept and supplying divine institution, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. which I adorn for thee, presume to receive, turn not to my judgment and condemnation. For thy goodness can prevail unto me for the protection of soul and body. Have we received thy healing? We will turn the Father and you who love the Holy Ghost, the Lord and of God, world without end. Amen. I want to receive the prayer of heaven
precious finding the love of Lord Jesus Christ, which we should serve. So, finding the soul of the life of the saint. Amen. Precious finding the love of Lord Jesus Christ, which we should for these children to serve the finding the soul of life everlasting. Amen. Precious finding the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Precious bunny and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which worship that we observe by finding the soul of the life everlasting. Amen. Precious bunny and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which worship that we observe by finding the soul of the life everlasting. Amen. Says, Bunny blood for Lord Jesus Christ, which was shepherd, serve thy body and soul, but life everlasting. Amen. Amen. 